Good morning. It is Wednesday. It's April 3rd, 2K13. Glad you're with us. This is WGTV Today. That's Wayne Goldsboro Television. I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best. Good Wednesday morning. Oh, boy. Well, here we are the middle of the week already. Yes, Kim, we are. And just moving right along. The weather is just fantastic. I mean, it's mild. Loving it. It's loving nice. it. Telling we're getting you, there. We're getting there. It's springtime. That's well, it's right. been springtime, but it was also springtime last week when it was 20 something. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Oh, my goodness. No doubt. All right, let's see. Now, today, April 3rd, let's look at today's birthday yes, very let's quickly. Yes, do. Uh, funny man, Eddie Murphy. What oh, a career yes. he has had. He is 51 today. Turns out he's a pretty good actor. Uh, I'd say so. Turns out. I mean, not just a comedian from Saturday Night Live. But, no, my but, goodness. Uh, he's done so many movies. He's done a lot. He and he's has. great. <laughs> he's 51 years today. Lee Allen Baker uh, is 40 today. She is the actress. She has had recurring roles on Will and Grace. More recently as Amy Duncan on Good Luck Charlie. Don't I don't know one. Good I Luck Charlie, either. but but she's on it. Uh, Paris Jackson's having a birthday today. Paris Jackson is 14, and if the name doesn't strike a chord with Michael you. Michael Jackson's child. That's right. She's 14. Wow. I can't believe she's that. She's a beautiful young lady. She is. Uh, she's remained largely out of the public, li uh, public eye, very wisely so. Yes. Uh, one of my favorites, Doris Day, Quesera Sera. Yes. And other stuff is 88 years today. Buttons and Bows, another one mm -hmm. of her big hits. No, that was Don Shore. Never mind. Anyway, 88 oh. today she is. Doris Day uh, did a lot of romantic comedies with Rock Hudson. Uh -huh. uh, the late Marlon Brando was born this day, 1924. Of course, he was the godfather, and he did so many other things on the waterfront. Uh, this, uh, Streetcar Named Desire, all those mo great movies. Uh, he was, uh, this day, 1924, uh, Gus Grissom, an American hero, astronaut, uh, born this day, 1926, died 1967 at a big fire on the launch pad there for Apollo 1. That oh, was wow. a test. He died. Uh, birthday today for one of my favorite entertainers, Wayne Newton. Oh, yes. Don Shane and a ton of other stuff. Um, what a voice he had as a youngster. Really? As no, a youngster? as a youngster. He, the song Donker Shane, he did um, uh, as, a, as a teenager. And he had that real high voice. Everybody thought it was a girl singing. Too funny. But it, and then listen to him now. Oh, oh, he is such a talent. Mr. Yeah. <clears throat> Mr. Las Vegas. That's right. That's right. That's right. He is 70 today. Uh, Adam Scott is 39 today. He's a comedian who appeared in many films and currently plays a guy named Ben Wyatt on the show Parks and Recreation. Mm -hmm. I don't know that show. I've seen it a couple times. Yeah. Also, Peekaboo Street having a birthday today. The skier is 41 today she is. Uh, quite a role model she is. She's uh, quite mm -hmm. an interesting person. Uh, Tony Orlando. Oh, yes. Of Tony Orlando and Dawn fame. Tony Orlando is 68 years today. His biggest hit was Knock Three Times. He and his... Knock uh, Three Times knock on the three Ceiling. Times. I remember That's that it. song. Mm -hmm. uh, and he went on to do a little bit of acting as well. He was on the Cosby Show a couple of times. Yes. He played a uh, recreation center director. But uh, he is uh, 68 years today. He and Dawn. Dawn was Joyce Vincent, and I forget the other lady's name, but the other lady went on to do a lot of other TV shows. All right, well, that's the birthdays for today. Happy birthday. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy birthday. Let's uh, see, Wayne, what else is happening locally? Well, we oh, have. Yeah. What, what, what do you have? I just realized Missoula is having, Missoula is a theater company, it's a traveling theater company, and they are having auditions for their big show coming up. It'll be, really? auditions will be at Stage Truck Children's Theater, which is directly behind the Paramount. On Monday, April the 8th at 4 o'clock p.m., they'll have auditions for the Missoula's Children's production of The Wizard of Oz. Really? It's a one-week oh, show, one-week commitment. Um, the auditions will last for two hours, and those attending should arrive 10 minutes early, and someone should stay, let's see, arrive 10 minutes early, and some, oh, some will need to stay for rehearsal following auditions. It's wow. because it happens really quick. These, this wow. is a traveling theater company. Right. I know they've used them on base several times, and we use them every year at Center, I mean, at um, Stage Truck. They come in, they bring their costumes, they bring everything, and they usually do a very well-known show with a little twist. It doesn't always go just like you think it will. And okay. it's really a great program, especially for, for new actors. If you have never acted before and you'd like to be a part, it's a large production, and they take a large number of children to be in this particular production, 
but it's only a week commitment where a lot of your other programs and productions that you do, whether you're with Center Stage or mm -hmm. Stage Truck mm -hmm. or Wayne Community College with their acting program, but it's usually like a month to two month commitments. Oh, yeah. So this is a good way to sort of break in and see if it's something you're interested in. And it's so much fun. My kids did it when they were young and it's a great program. Auditions Monday, April the 8th, four o'clock PM at Stage Struck Children's Theater behind the Paramount. All Wizard right. of Ops. Zumba. Would you like the way that You sounds? like that word? Zumba. Zumba's fun. Zumba for seniors is being offered starting tomorrow night at the Senior Center, starting at 6.15. Uh, learn to use the fitness equipment will be moved to 7.30. Okay, so that's moved to 7.30, but at 6.15, Zumba for Seniors gets underway at the Senior Center tomorrow evening. And registration is not required, just be there. All right? That's great. All right. There's a grief and loss uh, support group uh, if, if for, to gain strength and support from others who are also dealing with the loss of a loved one. This is a support group for you. It's sponsored by 3HC. They meet on the second Tuesday of every month. Uh, if you want to find out more about that, you can call 800-692-4442. They meet at Wayne Memorial Hospital in dining room number one. And that is a grief and loss support group. And you can call the hospital to find out more information about that as well. And that is Tuesday, April the 9th. Okay, <clears throat> I continue with our uh, technological myths that I had a couple of days yes. uh, so far this week. Today, today's myth says LCD TVs provide the best picture quality. Well, contraire, Pierre, that is not true. Uh, when it comes to picture quality, plasmas are still king. <laughs> Uh, in fact, uh, one of CNET's top five HD TVs of 2012, CNET is one of those websites that they right. test everything. But uh, CNET says is, uh, one of their top five HD TVs is an LCD. Uh, that's not to say LCD TVs are not a bad bargain, but for video files who want the deepest blacks and the best viewing angles, plasmas are still the best way to go. Not only that, but plasma HD TVs regularly come in at lower prices as well, and may see you may see even deeper discounts in the future if, as rumors imply, financially burdened Panasonic backs out of the plasma plasma business. You're going to see some prices fall. How about that? So How LCD about that? LCD TVs, if you like, plasmas are the better, according to CNET. All right. All right. Well, with spring right around the corner, if you will be at any time driving a boat or thinking about purchasing a boat, there's a safe boating course oh. that takes place at Wayne Community College. There I know that because my son took this class there actually. You go. It starts Tuesday, April the 9th at 7 o'clock p.m. The cost is $36 for books and materials. It says um, N A S B L A. How do you spell that? Uh, exactly like I said. Oh. <laughs> and the U.S. Coast Guard. Approved safe boating course is taught by certified instructors and Goldsboro Sail and Power Squadron. It qualifies for reduced insurance premiums. That's always nice. Boat operators 26 years and under are required to complete a safe boating course by the state law. And that is exactly right. Mm -hmm. If you are under the age of 26, you have to have a safe boating certificate to be able to drive a boat legally. And you can call Bo West. Wessel, Bill Wessel at 778-1207 or you can go to usps.org. That's Tuesday, April the 9th, 7 o'clock p.m., Wayne Community College, the Spruce Building, room 206. Oh, U.S. Power, Power Squadron. Yes. Yeah, USPS.org. Mm -hmm. Duh. Exactly. Okay. It's a great course. It's just that <clears> one <throat> night from 7 to 9 p.m. and you'll get your boating certificate or boating license. All right, line dancing class is being offered at the Senior Center and at Herman Park Center. Herman Park Center beginner class is uh, underway every Thursday, a beginner class at 6.30 and then a high beginner class at 7.30. The cost is $6 per class. However, if you go to the beginner class and then stay for later, they will not charge you an additional $6. But no pre-registration required, just go. You will have to sign an attendance sheet, however. And then at the Seeger Senior Center on East Ash Street, every Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. and then every Friday morning at 10 a.m. And those classes begin in May, May 21st and 31st, respectively. No classes on May 24th. 
but again, you must sign an attendance sheet, get uh, uh, details by calling the, those respective locations, Herman Park Center and Seeger's Senior Center. Good job. Woo! One last thing, <coughs> let's see, before we go to our first day? interview. Is that what you said? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> That's what you said. What, what else? Tomorrow what else? morning, Tomorrow. don't forget, if you are interested, the young professionals are having something called a morning rush at 7.30 a.m. It'll just be for an hour, 7.30 to 8.30. I don't have details on the, on the location. You can go to the Chamber of Commerce to find out more details. But it is a morning rush. It's kind of like a business after hours, but mm. it's a business before hours. And that's for the young professionals here in our community. They would love to have you come and um, mingle with other young professionals in the community and change, exchange one another's business information, make new contacts. Hey. All right, let's see who's up next. I believe we're going to go to Carolyn King. And well, that is it for now. Wayne County Health Department. That's, that's exactly right. right. Stay tuned. And Our guest this morning is our friend Carolyn King with the Wayne County Health Department. Uh, Carolyn's back with us today and Dr. Kim Larson who is with the Wayne County Board of Health and welcome. I appreciate you both coming in and speaking with us this morning. All right, first of all, Carolyn with the Wayne County Health Department, what do you do with the Health Department? Um, Wayne, I'm the Health Education Supervisor. All right. And Dr. Larson with the Board of Health, uh, you are a, a doctor of research as I understand. I'm a nurse. And a nurse. And uh, I have a PhD in nursing research. And you do this where? East, East Carolina University. Wonderful. Go Pirates. Okay. There yeah. you go. Uh, <laughs> all right. Now the, uh, the topic uh, we want to touch on to start uh, is the abstinence essay contest. Uh, who wants to tackle this? How did this get started? Well Wayne, probably around 2002, uh, 2003, um, the health education staff came together in a meeting. Mm -hmm. And we th wanted to think of a way that was somewhat out of the box to reach young people, uh, to discuss an issue that is very sensitive to many. And so we came up with the idea of an abstinence essay contest. Okay. And from there it has um, developed along the way. And thanks to the Board of Health, uh, they have supported it through um, their own stipends as well as this community has also given funding to the abstinence essay contest in the earlier years of um, the event. In, in fact, in the earlier years of the event, uh, we really did not reward these students with money. But our um, Board of Health felt like it was such a good idea. Uh, I think it was in 2006. Mm -hmm. That's when we sort of uh, upped the ante, so to speak. I tell you, it's very impressive. Uh, the, the prizes are, are impressive. Uh, a third, I believe, is what, $200? Well, uh, there are scholarships attached. Scholar yes, yeah, so scholarships and cash awards. Right. Uh, first place is a $1,000 scholarship $1, yes. and a $200 gift certificate. Mm -hmm. Second place uh, is $500 scholarship and a $100 gift certificate. And third place is a $300 scholarship and a $50 gift certificate. Now, the, who, who participates in the, in the contest? Students in Wayne County grades 9 through 12. Um, this includes students in the public school, private schools, and also homeschool. Uh, Dr. Larson, how important do you, does the board feel this is to, to uh, students understanding abstinence and, and becoming involved in this contest? How does the board feel about this? Oh, very, th very strongly about this. And uh, so much that, as Carolyn said, we contributed the small stipend that the county offers uh, board members to come to their meetings and to participate and, um, you know, just gave that stipend to the scholarship fund. Um, just, we, and then every year the students come to the board meeting and recite, the winners recite their essays. And um, it's very impressive to see these 16, 17, 18 year olds come in and, and be so, you know, just um, self-confident about their values and mm -hmm. their um, beliefs and, and their parents come. It's, it's truly um, a wonderful thing and we're, we're really glad that it's uh, become so prominent and uh, a tradition in our community. Yeah. Do we have feedback from the students on this? How do, they, how do they see this? Lots of times students in their essays will, um, one essay I can remember reading, um, 
was a student who made the remark, and uh, I believe this was a young man, that uh, he had never really given um, the thought of abstinence, or the idea of abstinence, a whole lot of thought. Um, but after writing his essay, he realized that there were numerous benefits to remaining abstinence in terms of preventing STDs mm -hmm. and unwanted, you know, or excuse me, unplanned pregnancies. Right. And, and this is a growing problem uh, across the country as well as here in Wayne County. Yes, yes it is. Um, and, and it's, you know, it, it's, it was so important that um, recently legislation passed uh, that, that really helped um, s public schools uh, with some curriculum, some stronger curriculum mm. that is abstinence-based, but it's now called comprehensive sexual health education, which is a really um, the, the way to go. It gives all students the, the needed knowledge. And, and that was the Healthy Youth Act of 2009, and uh, it's going going nicely in Wayne County. Is the attitude of, of is the attitude changing towards sex education? At one time, it was so taboo; you didn't talk about it. But has this changed over the last few years? Do you want to speak? I think it has. I do too. I think um, most parents uh, today. You know, well, let's let's think about it this way. You know. Um, Forty years ago, if you contracted an STD, you could normally go over to the local doctor's office or the public health department and you could get treated for it. Mm -hmm. Well, now there are things out there that there is no treatment for yes. or, or that you cannot cure completely. So I think a lot of parents do look at sex education a little differently mm -hmm. uh, because they want to protect their kids as much as possible. Are par do parents still have problems relating uh, sex education to their children? Uh, you I find I'm better now. some of my research has been with um, adolescents and, and I worked with parents and it, parents want scientifically accurate information mm -hmm. given to their, their children. And um, sex education in the schools is based on scientific data. And it's accurate and it's, it's provided by trained staff so uh, that's what I find. That's what parents want. They want their, their children to have the right knowledge right. to make the right decisions. I would think that some parents would be relieved that it's offered in schools rather than the parents having, having to offer it at home. But see, that's the wrong attitude as well, isn't it? Well, I think it's a partnership. I think that, you know, trained teachers, mm -hmm. you know, give the scientific information and parents reinforce that with their values and, and beliefs. Years ago, we um, did a presentation at one of the um, middle schools, and um, we had a child that slipped into a classroom without his parents' permission. And, and so um, we had to deal with that by revisiting that school and presenting the entire presentation to the parents. And uh, of course, it, it really wasn't our glitch, it, it sort of just happened. Right. But I, you know, reassured those parents that we were not there to instill our values in their children. We were there to prevent, present clinical, matter-of-fact information. And it was up to the parents to convey their own values to their kids. Um, and this sex education can be a slippery slope. And um, I certainly came into it as a health educator with um, with, with my own, um, I guess you could say, anxieties yeah. about do, teaching it. Do you have parents who still say, I'll take care of it myself, I'll teach my child at home? Do you still have that, uh, or do you have it as much as you had at one time? Or I think there are still a few parents who say that they don't, wouldn't like their like um, child to participate, but I th for the most part, um, it's the majority of parents um, want their child to participate well, in these programs. What about misconceptions? Uh, what, what are some of the misconceptions associated with this, with sex education or with the abstinence program? Well, in terms of the abstinence essay contest, yes. I think most of us agree that we do not want teenagers having sex. Unfortunately, 
the reality is we do have teenagers, you know, that are having sex. Yes. And so I think that's where the other part of um, comprehensive sex education comes into play, is we want to encourage young people to make good choices, um, because that's very important. Uh, and if they're not going to abstain, then there are other means of protecting themselves. But what's misunderstood about the program? That when students attend the program or become involved with the abstinence essay contest, they say, oh, oh, I didn't know that. Is there, an, is there a misunderstanding or a misconception by the, by the participants or by the parents? In terms of? The, the abstinence essay contest, or in, in fact about abstinence. Well, I am afraid a lot of people still do not know about our abstinence essay contest. And we do promote it through the school system. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that, I think, we, I'm, I am positive we have a lot of people that will watch this program today that will go, oh, I didn't know that. Right. Uh, but we do make every effort to put uh, little block ads in the local papers mm -hmm. in this area. And um, I guess maybe the misconception might be that there really are not any kids choosing abstinence mm -hmm. because based um, on statistics. Yes. But but you know, um, we do know that we have kids that choose abstinence. A lot of them will tell us that in their essay. Uh, and, and I think the abstinence essay contest, one of the reasons it came about was to help those kids, to support those kids that have chosen abstinence, they, that may feel a little ostracized. That gee, I'm, you know, I'm weird, I'm strange because, you know, I'm 17, I've never had sex. Well, you know, we know that we've got kids out there that have chosen to be abstinent, and we want to say to them, you know, good for you. Mm -hmm. Right. While at the same time, we're not there to put some child down who um, maybe has chosen otherwise. But we're, it's all about making good choices, and we do know that if you abstain, you do not get pregnant. Uh, you should not get an, a, a sexually transmitted disease. Uh, unless you're doing IV drugs or those kinds of things, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so um, it's a it's a good choice, and and um, I think we really came at this essay contest with that in mind, mm -hmm. was to promote something that would be positive, and maybe something that would prevent young people from having broken hearts. You know, a condoms not going it, it might protect you from STDs, it might protect you from getting pregnant but it's not going to do a thing for your emotional health no. uh, if, if this, you know, relationship breaks apart. And at the same time, you want parents to understand you're not there to push an ideology or an idea or your personal idea of feelings about, no. uh, about any of this. No, this no, is, no. This is in, none of that. Right. In fact, the essay contest, the, the beauty of it is, you know, they are, they're given guidelines. They have an entry form, which mm -hmm. they can actually go to wayneteens.com and, and obtain that entry form. And then they follow the guidelines, and then they write the essay. And most of these kids are writing that essay from their gut. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, you know, it's okay for them to quote statistics. Um, but I think what our judges look for really more so is we're looking for that essay that really, um, I guess you could say, really sends the message home that that they believe this is a good choice, um, and that and they, you know, state all the reasons why it's the best choice. Uh, I mean, it's it's one hundred percent sure. Mm -hmm. um, while at the same time, and, and I, like I say, I, I, I came into this field with some anxieties of my own because sex education is such a, um, everyone has a different opinion. Uh, it pushes a lot of buttons. Yes, mm -hmm. sir, yes. it does. Yes. But the bottom line is we want young people to arrive at adulthood okay. Um, healthy. healthy. Healthy and, and safe. And safe. And safe. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Larson, the, the, the act that passed back in 2009, tell me about that, how that relates. Well, interestingly enough, Wayne, um, it was parents who went to the legislature and said, you know, we're in favor of comprehensive sex education. A study was done. And, and based on that grassroots, you know, parent 
you know, North Carolina parent effort, um, this healthy, the Healthy Youth Act, and, uh, you know, all of us were very proud of that name because that's what it really, that's the bottom line, as Carolyn says. Um, but it is comprehensive sex education in the public schools, and it's with trained uh, teachers that are trained in the scientifically accurate message mm -hmm. of sex education. It's <coughs> abstinence-based, but it also includes other ways to protect yourself as a as a young person um, which you know includes condoms and um, birth control you know information right. obviously none of that is delivered um, to adolescents in schools we don't right. we don't do that we we make the scientifically um, accurate information available to adolescents for their um, knowledge base and uh, so that's excellent so uh, Wayne teens dot com w a y n e t e e n s dot com, dot com. Uh, participants can go online and look at that website and get and download the the application right. or the registration form mm -hmm. uh, does it cost anything to enter oh no I knew that <laughs> 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 I, wa I wanted a, to ask this is a win win situation win win the prizes are wonderful uh, the scholarship uh, money the the, the uh, the gift, gift, certi gift certificates are wonderful. A and I can say, truly say this, um, the essays that we read are a tribute to educators in mm -hmm. this county and because we read some outstanding essays that are extremely well written and extremely hard to judge. Um, and of course it's a tribute to parents mm -hmm. because Indeed. kids get to try out um, their skills in terms of writing, um, which certainly again is a win-win situation. And you know it's coming from their heart. Right. When, when you read these. These, these are very personal. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, uh, are these made public? Yes. In fact, when you go to this website, you'll see all the winners um, that have participated Wonderful. in the abstinence essay contest, and you can read their essays. All right. One more time. Who is eligible to participate? Grades 9 <coughs> through 12, mm -hmm. public, private, homeschooled. Any child living in Wayne County. Any child in Wayne County, public, private, or homeschooled, grades 9 through 12. Correct. Carolyn King, Wayne County Health Department, mm -hmm. thank you. And Dr. Larson of ECU and the Wayne County Board of Health, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, thank Wayne. You. Thank you. I'm Wayne Alley. And we're back we on are. Wayne Goldsboro Television. Woo all right, let's go ahead and get the trivia question out of the way for today. Let's do it. All, all right, right, let's go ahead. Here's the trivia question for today. It has to do with your feet. Your feet? Okay. Your feet. Six or more things can be worn on your feet, beginning with the letter S. Obviously, shoes. Sneakers. Okay. Is that not? That, yeah. Is that one of them? Shoes, socks. Slippers. Sneakers and slippers. That's four. Skis. Ah. Uh. Skates. Yes. Snowshoes. Okay. Stockings. True. And stilts. You don't really wear a stilt, but that's okay. Well, we'll, we'll go with it. And one more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You don't really wear them. <laughs> and one more. And one more. Starts with S. Well, if it's as strange as a stilt, it could be anything. Well. <laughs> Are you trying to give me a hard time? I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Shoes and socks and sneakers and slippers and skis and skates and shoes, snowshoes and stockings and stilts have all been named. All right. There's one more. Well, I have no idea. Yeah, you do. I do? Yes, you do. Give me a hint. No. Of course not. Well, you, you know, you, you made fun of my stilts. Sandals. True. Okay. Here's another trivia Sandals. question. Sandals. <laughs> <laughs> here's another trivia question. Okay. Um, Which still is what's kind of weird. A sport. There's one sport in which most of the time mm -hmm. no one knows who the winner is until after the game or the event is over. Now, wait a minute. Isn't Be that kind of the situation with most things? There's one sport in which neither the spectators nor the participants know the score or who is the leader uh, until the contest ends. That's a little different. Okay. Okay. Fine. What did I say? <laughs> I messed up. Okay. No, you did. That's fine. Okay. So you don't even know the score until the contest is over. You don't know the over. score 
until the contest is over. Many times you don't know who the winner is, but usually you can figure it out. I have to think about that. If you don't know the score, what kind of sport is it? That's what I'm thinking. Until it's over. But there is a score. There is a score. There truly is a score, and a lot of people don't think about it. Is this a, a, a very a, a very well-known game that oh, yeah. everybody does on a regular, not on a regular uh, basis? But not everybody. Not okay. Everybody. But it is, a, it is a sporting event. A sporting event. A sporting event. I don't know everything I think of from... Running with the Bulls? No, not running with the Bulls. <laughs> In which neither the spectators, now the, now the Bulls keep score. It's a sport in which neither the spectators nor the participants know the score. We're not going to be surprised when we hear this. You will not be surprised. Okay. Or who the leader is until the contest ends. What is the sport? I do not know, Wayne. I know. Yes, you do. I'm oh, I can't. Right here. I, you know Wayne. Wayne's sitting right here. I know here you, but I don't know the answer to oh, this question. Oh, you don't know. Oh, hmm. Well, when you said, I don't know Wayne, I thought you meant you don't know him. Uh, yeah, sometimes there's I a, don't. There's a comma in there somewhere, right? Okay. All right. You're going to tell us the answer call. later. Okay. I will tell you the answer later. Hello. Well, yes. Hel no, just, just hello. <laughs> Your turn. Good morning. <laughs> I'm going to tell you some natural snooze inducers. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> All right, hold on, I hadn't told you oh, yet. Oh, yeah, okay. Some natural snooze inducer. So yeah, if you're having How'd you do that? I don't, magic. Magic. If you are having trouble going to sleep or taking a nap in the afternoon, yes. let's see what you can do about that. Okay. Let's see. You can take a hot bubble bath, which we all know that. To drift off gently and naturally, try some of these home remedies. Taking a bath before bed relaxes your muscles and releases muscular tension. I'm not big on bubble baths. All right, we'll move on to the next one. How about that? Let's try this one. Okay. How about lavender aromatherapy? Is that your favorite? <laughs> I'm not big on lavender either. I don't know. Well, you know? I like lavender. Some studies okay. have shown that the scent of lavender acts as a mild sedative helping you fall asleep faster and sleep more soundly. There are plenty of products to choose from, from massage oils to lotions to bath salts and reed diffusers, and the list goes on and on. So lavender aromatherapy is another one. How about a lullaby? You like lullabies? I'm not answering that question. <laughs> okay, nighttime lullabies don't just work on babies. Older people with sleep problems reported a 35% improvement after listening to 45 minutes of music before bedtime in a study in the Journal of Advanced Nursing. While mm. the music doesn't have to be Brahms, we're not talking the Black Eyed Peas either. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that? that's good. That's it good. needs to be a steady music such as classical tunes or soft, oh, yeah. soft jazz. Yeah, I'll go along with that. Okay. I'll go along with that. Will you? Okay. Yeah. Well, my last one is... What in the world is this? A white noise machine. Oh, yes. Now, those, those white work. White noise machines block out background noise, such mm -hmm. as partner's loud snoring mm -hmm. or street traffic mm -hmm. that might otherwise prevent shut eye. Two worth trying. What does that say? Hometics. Hometics Sound Spa. Hometics Sound Spa. Yeah, Hometics is a brand. Okay, you can get it from Bed Bath & Beyond mm -hmm. and Brookstone. Tranquil Moments Sleep Sound Therapy System at brookstone.com. Brookstone. So there are two different ones that you can use. Have you heard of these machines? I, I, I have not heard of these particular machines, but I actually use white noise. Well, tell me what that me means. Sleep. It's just noise. I run a fan. Oh, okay. I run okay. a fan at night, and it makes yeah. a, a, a hum, okay. or just a plain noise. When I think of white noise, I think about when, when the radio station goes off the air. <sighs> Uh -huh. that. okay. But that's, that's, that's one form of white noise. There's many different kinds of white noise. Interesting. But it's a noise that is calming like a babbling brook. Some of these make noises like yeah, babbling yeah. brook. Yeah, like a constant, like steady noise. A constant noise, yes. Okay. There's not a lot of fluctuation in the, uh, okay. in the, in the sound waves. Interesting. And the last one is melatonin. Some people say that oh, taking yeah. this hormone supplement helps them sleep, but experts say it's not for everyone. Melatonin is a sleep regulator that affects your body's biological clock by signaling that it's time for sleep but it doesn't make you feel sleepy, says Dr. Bruce. Bruce. It's, it's really for people who need to reset their clock, such as shift workers for those dealing with jet lag or mm. other things such as that. Interesting. Yeah. So there are a few tips. Go get you some lavender and no, take a bubble bath. I don't and think so. Thank you very much. Listen we're, to a lullaby. No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> All right. Who's up funny, next? Funny, funny. Let's see. Who is up next? Uh, Wayne Community College and the Animal Adoption Education Center up oh, next. Boy. All right. Do you know what's happening at Wayne Community College? 
Well, let's find out. Today I have with me Tara Humphreys. She is the Public Information Officer for Wayne Community. Welcome to the show, Tara. Thank you for having me. Oh, we're always interested in hearing what's going on at Wayne Community, and, and I know you have a busy schedule. Oh, yes, there's always a ton going on yes, at Wayne there, Community. As soon as one thing starts, the next one's that, rolling that's in, right? That's right, and here we are barely into spring, and we're already looking at summer. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, <laughs> we you have are. our summer registration coming up um, on Friday, April 12th from 8 to noon. So uh, encouraging Summer. people to come on out to that first registration period because they may want to get what they want to get. the classes <laughs> yeah, that right. you have in your mind that I you want to take, right. first, first choice is the best thing that's to do. Right. There, there will be another opportunity on May 20th, which is actually the day before summer classes start. Uh. But if you want that class, if you want to lock in, mm -hmm. come on out on April 12th. April 12th. That's a Friday. That's right. Okay. Um, and, and then we're already getting ready for fall. We'll be holding our first registration for fall in July. Okay. Um, classes don't start till August 15, and there'll be another registration for fall, August 14. Um, I'm sorry, 13 and 14. But again, go ahead, get locked in. Right. You know you, you want to come in getting. the fall. So typically, is your your like pre-registration a month before classes start? Is that typically the way Our first the way open works? registration first open? period. It's a month be. before classes start. Some, yes, okay. Generally, but um, we know that folks, we're going to need some assistance. Right. And there is plenty out there. But the way to guarantee that is to meet the priority deadline for that FAFSA, okay. that fr let's see, free application. application for federal student aid. We yes. just say FAFSA. We do. We forget what it means we sometimes, do. don't we? I know. <laughs> and that's May 1. That's okay. a way to guarantee that when you do come register you know, to lock in those classes, that your aid is there. We already have all the forms. Um, so and you possibly be meet eligible that for priority deadline and that type thing as well yeah, in the community. Do, do not wait until um, you know, July, August. Yes. Go ahead and try to meet that priority deadline. And April is also the time for any new or returning students to apply for a scholarship through the foundation. Okay. Now, so. where can they find the, the list of those scholarships mm -hmm. and what the requirements are for each one of those? They actually don't have to do that. Okay. They nice. fill out a general application, which is available um, on the foundations page of the Wayne Community College website, or they can come in and visit with the nice folks in our foundation office to get that application. Okay. They figure out which of the many scholarships they have fit that student. Oh, how if nice. If they're a That's nursing student, if they're in one of the um, technical programs, or if they're just college transfer, maybe um, they have a disability. We have certain scholarships for that. So they will find the right scholarship for them if they are eligible. Mm -hmm. And you need to fill that application out completely to make the sure most importance. that's okay. right. Don't well, leave out anything. Well, that is so nice that you all have individuals who can do it one-on-one -on -one because everybody's situation is so very it different. Is. It is. And, and you want privacy mm -hmm. and you want to be able to share that information and, and feel comfortable. So that's a great, that's a great situation and that you all offer. How fabulous that we have so many scholarships available because of the generosity of our community. Yes. And, so. and we say that all the time. <laughs> One of the most giving places I Absolutely. know Absolutely. And a so. job fair. And a job fair. Coming up. It's, and we are expecting um, around 20 uh, businesses to participate. Here in our community. Here in our community. So encouraging folks to come out on Thursday the 18th. To Wayne Community? To Wayne Community from 9 to noon, and that's put on by our Cooperative Education Department and the Airmen and Family Readiness Center on the base. They do that together, and there will be a variety of businesses and government and, uh, you know, it, anything you might be interested in. Come on out well, and, if you're, and see. Yeah, that is perfect mm -hmm. opportunity. If you're looking for a job or looking for a job change, this mm -hmm. is definitely the place to go where you can talk with the individuals one-on-one, -on -one, get information, mm -hmm. and all in one place. And we encourage Perfect. folks to come ready. Come with that resume. Come oh. dressed. Perfect. If you Perfect. were going come to like interview going that day, interview. you've right. got to impress. You've got to be ready. That first impression. Have your game face on. That's right. Wonderful. So, but do come out. Of course, the big, yes. big, big event is that we have the Vietnam Wall coming to the campus. We'll be hosting that. It's the wall that heals. It's huge. I'm understanding football field length. That will arrive on the 16th. Too much fanfare. Oh yes. So we, excited. Can't we, wait for this. It's going to be 
going to be great. We're expecting thousands and thousands of people to come to our campus. How great for our community. Absolutely. And what a great co collaboration and with Wayne Community College. And we'll be the only North Carolina site this year. Oh, so that's quite so an honor. Yes. Um, folks will be able to actually come and see it the 18th through the 21st. And I it guess there, we don't have to worry about where it is. You'll see it when you, you drive see it as, as soon as you come right up on that campus, it's going to be right there on your right. You okay. cannot miss it. And it, it will be set up um, quite respectably. Oh. It, it will be beautiful. Do you have to pay anything to go see it? Absolutely not. Free to the public. That's, right. That's nice. And, and there will be events around it from the time it comes in. There will be a roll call of local um, folks who died during the war. That, that, uh, that's going to be a very nice ceremony. There's going to be a POW MIA ceremony. Um, just well, where can heart people touching. find the, the list of activities mm -hmm. that'll be um, taking place surrounding this? If they go to the college's website, from that front page, we're going to have a special page that will be, uh, I think you'll just be able to access it right there. There Great. should be a graphic and okay. you'll be able to see Click all the events and everything. details and information about all the organizations that are involved. Um, there are two programs that are going to require tickets. They're free, but because we can only hold 400 in our auditorium, yes. both of those will require tickets in advance. Okay. So you get those from the foundation office. Uh, that information will also be on that special web page. Okay. We're going to have good. Escape from Behind Enemy Lines, the John Stiles story, yes, one of yes. our wonderful oh, yes. local men, and then My Enemy, My Friend, which involves Mr. Stiles, Brigadier General Dan Cherry will both be there, and in spirit will be Lieutenant Hong Mai, who was the Vietnamese officer who was involved in all shooting each other down and later right. becoming friends, reconciling. What a fabulous such a neat story. story. Yes. So if you're interested in participating mm -hmm. in any of these events, go to Wayne Community College. You will see the link that will take you straight right. to the Vietnam Wall, Wayne the traveling CC. wall. WayneCC.edu. WayneCC.edu. Yep. That sounds great. You got a couple more things Just for us Just a there? couple more. Uh, also in April is the deadline to nominate your favorite small business for a Small Business of the Year Award. Deadline is April 25th. The, the awards will be given out during Small Business Week in May, a nice luncheon. But go ahead, again you can go to our website to find those applications. Uh, also the Chamber's website. And think about it now. Yes. And it's a fairly simple application. Well, we have so many great businesses <laughs> here in our community, do. so if you know of someone who has been above and beyond mm -hmm. and done above and beyond, please take the time to nominate them. It's, right. it's a special award. And we have some really nice prizes for them. That's always a plus. <laughs> it is. It's always a plus. And then just a, a couple more things to touch on. We're going to have a really fun spring concert this year. Okay. At, at your at auditorium? The, yes. And it... Uh, always involves our choir. Right. But this year we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of our community college system, 1963. So everything in that concert is going to be around that. Songs and costumes. Um, we're going to have one of our bands that's made up of our employees, the Storm Surfers, performing. Oh, wow. I've heard Elvis is going to appear. So that's just going to be a, <laughs> a fun, fun And the public is invited. And then, right after that, the week after that, we graduate. Oh, great, great <laughs> ending to And then year. we start summer. And then we start all over again. Yeah, what's, what's the date wow. of graduation? Our adult high school and GED graduation, which is always just really pulls at my heartstrings, is May 9th, right on our campus. The next night, Friday night, the 10th, we will be at Love Temple for our curriculum graduation. Oh, how special. So all of those associate degree and certificate and diploma recipients will be marching. Well, Tara, we always love to hear what's happening at Wayne Community. We talk about you guys on the show all the time, and, and we're so glad to have you come and share some quick you. details of what's happening at Wayne Community. Everybody, take the time to Please. go to, what's the website one more time? WayneCC.edu. And there you can get any information you would like about happenings, whether it's the traveling wall or any of the events that Tara's talked about today. So thank you for joining us. Thank you once and again. And this is what's happening at Wayne Community College. All right, we're here with Graham Price of the Wayne County Animal Adoption and Education Center. And uh, Graham, who do we have here? This is Rascal. Rascal? How old is Rascal? Um, we're thinking maybe around a year old. About a year. Still a puppy. Yes, sir. Will Rascal get any bigger? Um, he will probably get wider 
more than taller. Okay, wider more than taller. All right, got a lot of energy. Yes, and, sir. And a, and a dog like this needs a lot of room to run. Yes, sir. All right, now, uh, Rascal is available for adoption right now at the Animal Control and Adoption Center. About a year old. Is there a breed here? Can you pinpoint? I would say Shepherd Mix. A Shepherd Mix. Rascal is available, right? And he's neutered. And is neutered. For $25, he is available. For how much? $25 per approved application. Per approved application for $25 right here at the Animal Control and Adoption Center. So, uh, right here, Rascal is about a year old, a shepherd mix, a lot of energy, and needs room to run. Now, there's certain restrictions that apply when you're applying to, uh, to adopt an animal here at the Animal Adoption Center. But uh, I'll tell you, these animals need a good home, and here's a fine, playful dog that is, that is ready to find a good home and fit in your home. All right, so Animal Adoption Center. The telephone number here, Graham? 919, 731-1439. 731-1439, I'm Wayne Alley. Our cat of the week this week is named Simba. Simba's about eight weeks old, and Simba's uh, siblings were just adopted, so Simba's all alone here at the Animal Control and Adoption Center. Simba is available for adoption. This short-haired domestic uh, cat is available for adoption from the Animal Control and Adoption Center for only $50. Only $50, and you can take Simba home with approved and approved application. Now, in order to, to adopt Simba, simply call the Animal Control and Adoption Center at 731-1439, 919-731-1439. Again, a short-haired black, solid black, a domestic uh, cat, short-haired domestic cat, available for adoption, and uh, that's only $50 here, and have yourself a, a nice family member, a new family member in your home, brand new kitten, uh, eight weeks old. Okay, we are back. Let me remind you that our program is on every morning at 7 o'clock. It's also on every noon, Monday through Friday at noon. That was good. <laughs> Thank you. It took me a while to figure <laughs> that one out, but I did. Anyway, we also repeat at 5.30 in the afternoon, then again at uh, some point during the evening hours. And I say some point because it fluctuates depending on whatever other the programming we have on as well. Right. And you can see it four times on a weekend. Oh, my goodness. It's a little much WGTV, <laughs> Kim and Wayne. <laughs> Wayne Goldsboro Television. Partnership between the County of Wayne and the City of Goldsboro, spreading the news of what's happening both in the county, the city, and in our local community. Indeed. And we appreciate your being with us this morning. And let's see what else we have. We talked about the safe boating course. We have, but you know there's a, um, <laughs> I've never heard of this, the third annual Geekers Sports Achievement Awards. The Geekers That's Sports one. I don't know. Let's find out what okay, this is. what is that? Tuesday, April the 9th at 5.30 p.m. The cost is free at the Paramount Theater. Great food and entertainment for the whole family. Reception in the lobby. Free for all. Award ceremony. Once again, we'll be honoring basketball players, coaches, cheerleaders, and fans in Wayne County. Oh, boy. A Geekers Sport Achievement Award. I don't really understand. Okay. Okay. Call or text, email, donate, volunteer, any of these things. You can call 919-344-5162. If you want to find out more about this, Coach Eric E.V. Vaughn Sr. is the one in charge. It is Downtown Goldsboro Paramount Theater, third annual Geekers Sports Achievement Award. Which means they've done this twice before. Yes, it does. But so I'm there you go. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but you may know yourself. But it sounds great. Yes, it does. Paramount Theater, and again, that's what, April that's 9th. And Tuesday, April 9th. Free? free to the public. Free to the public. Oh, that's boy. right. Well. What else is happening? During the month of April, yes. the Senior Center is going to be offering a beginner jewelry class every oh, Wednesday yeah. from 10 to 12. That That's right. Like That's fun. nice. It's a five dollar fee for each class that pays for supplies. Advanced registration is required. The class is limited to only eight students. And if you'd like to participate, call see how many people are in there now. And if there's less than eight, then you could probably probably become a part of this organization. Seven three four forty six forty six. That's Martha's phone number. Martha Merritt seven three four four six four six for more information and to register. All right. Good. 
Well, remember, mark your calendars for April 19th. Something big is happening in our community. What, what, what? Dancing Stars of Wayne County. Really? Happening on April the 19th. April 19th. Paramount Theater. Yeah. If you want to see a lot of your locals dancing and supporting Wayne Education Network, you need to come out on April 19th to the Paramount Theater. They're taking donations now. This is a voting process. The person that wins will vote by by people getting the most votes and having the most donations. You can do that online, and you can find all that information at the Chamber of Commerce's website. Don't remember it right offhand? Uh, Chamber of Commerce? Yes. It's WayneCountyChamber.com. There you go. WayneCountyChamber.com. But you want to find out, either click on Dancing with the Stars or Wayne Education Network, which is WEN, W-E-N. Mm -hmm. That's coming up. All right. Okay, uh, let's see, what else do we have? Answer to your trivia answer question, to trivia my question friend. Today. The answer to the question uh, is boxing. No one knows the score until the boxing match is over. Uh. Now, they may know who the winner is. A lot of times they don't because it's such a close. But right. The score is not until that hand until, goes up. Until the boxing match is over and the judges reveal their scores. Well, and there that's you the only go. Sport. There you go. I've got another question tomorrow. Wait till you hear this one. Uh-oh. Well, don't forget, lobsters are coming to Goldsboro. They First are? Week, they are. I remember I went Straight to from Maine. a concert at Monterey one year. The lobsters were playing. Were they? They do yeah. a good job. A uh, bunch of hams. Clams. Clams? No. Oh, well, we lost that one. We lost that one. Please lose it. <laughs> <laughs> On Friday, May the 3rd, the very first Friday in the month of May, the Partnership for Children will be having their annual Lobster and Shrimp Fest. Oh, that lobster? Yes. Oh, yeah. They are fantastic, both the lobster and the shrimp. It all goes back, back for a good cause and claws, as they want me to say. I know, that's bad, too. Yeah, uh, I bad. know, it pretty like bad. Me. It's just bad. <laughs> Wayne told it to me. <laughs> It's, um, if you want to find out more about it, go to their website, pfcw.org, and you can find out details, and you can stop by there. They're at 800 North William Street to purchase a ticket. So, that's our program for today. Yes, Let's it is. Let's do it is. again bright and early tomorrow morning. We'll be here at 7 o'clock every day, Monday through Friday, we are, in fact. So, if you want to join us online, you can do that. Check out the archives at waynegov.com and click on the YouTube link. It'll take you right to our programs. You can also go to goldsboronc.gov and click on Wayne Goldsboro Television or the YouTube icon and it'll take you straight to the programs as well. So have yourself a fine day. We'll be back tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. Until then, I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best and this is what's happening in your community.